udah ganti kakak kemarin pas lihat kakak nangis cuma berdua doang isinya jadi kayak berasa udah berdua kepala keluarga iya jadi ibu iya jadi kakak juga iya soalnya berubah secara dadakan kalau per tanggal 10 Januari 2022 ini memang tercatat kurang lebih 33.977 anak yang kehilangan salah satu atau kedua orang tuanya akibat COVID-19 ini. Ya ini ngeri, ini tantangannya. Makanya pemerintah itu tantangannya sangat besar pada pandemi ini. COVID-19 has taken more lives in a short span of time than any other natural disasters in recent history. More than 140,000 people have died in Indonesia alone. And around 33,000 Indonesians have lost one or both parents, making them vulnerable to expectations and abuse. What does the future hold for these children who have been deprived of parental love and care which they once enjoyed? Can something be done to help them before it's too late? It's 4 a.m. in the city of Kadiri in East Java province, Indonesia. It's all quiet and peaceful. Not even the Muslim call to prayer could yet be heard from a mosque nearby in this predominantly Muslim region. At the time when many of her schoolmates are still fast asleep, 17-year-old Tasia is already up and about. She's been busy helping her mother prepare a variety of food items to sell to the morning crowd along a street nearby. It's the only thing that she can do to help generate some income for the family after her father died of COVID-19 in August last year. Kalau bangun mulai jam 4, bantu ibu, nanti ke warung, bantu belanja ke pasar jam 5. Habis itu kalau sekolahnya offline, pulang, mandi, berangkat sekolah. Terus nanti pulang sekolah jam 11-an. Kan nanti sampai rumah jam 12-an gitu. Terus nanti apa itu, jam 12 berangkat kerja, sampai jam 4 pulang, bantu ibu beres-beres warung. Every morning without fail, Tasia's mother, Sumini, would push the food cart to a location near the house. She would then follow her mom on a motorbike with a jerry can of water. This has become Tasia's daily routine six days a week before going to school at around 7 a.m. Sebelum bapak nggak ada itu udah bantu, tapi cuma nggak pagi-pagi, cuma jam 6, kalau nggak jam 7 baru keluar. Kalau oke itu habis bapak nggak ada, baru pagi jam 4 pagi sini. As the day breaks around 5.30 a.m., they are ready for business. Tasia's mother, Sumini, sells cooked rice fried tofu, instant noodles, prawn fritter, as well as coffee and tea at this makeshift store on the street corner in Kadiri. She often sleeps for only four hours every day. But instead of wallowing in self-pity, Tasia feels she has a duty to support her mother during the pandemic and rebuild their lives all over again. She's among around 33,000 children who have lost either one or two parents to the pandemic in Indonesia. After losing the sole breadwinner in the family, Tasia has no other choice but to confront all the challenges in life head-on for the sake of her family. 
Iya baru ngerasa kan dulu kalau ada ayah kan apa itu minta apa nggak turuti gitu. gitu. Tapi ya nggak semua tetap apa itu harus nabung. Her father worked as a delivery driver, supplying milk to shops and homes in Kadiri. What he earned every month was just enough for the family. But his death dealt a huge blow to the family, forcing them to find an alternative source of income in order to survive. In spite of all the adversities, Tasia remains determined to finish high school and continue with her education. Kalau Tasya itu pengennya sih jadi pengusaha sukses aja gitu. Apa itu kayak kalau sementara ini masih uh, yang penting Tasya mau kuliah dulu. Terus apa itu habis kuliah baru apa itu mau ikut orang atau uh, bikin usaha sendiri. Tasia is not the only child whose life has been disrupted by COVID-19. In the province of East Java alone, more than 5,000 children have been orphaned by the pandemic, and all of them will have to deal with this bitter legacy of the pandemic. Losing a parent very suddenly through, an, uh, through uh, the pandemic, after a year long of, of being on lockdown and having uh, to hear um, about what is happening outside of their family home, is a very scary um, uh, thing for a child to have to go through. So in a way, uh, it, it matters less whether it's the mother or the, the, the father that may have passed away. What matters is that they have passed away in this sudden way and completely disrupt the child's um, family home and household. Masa kanak-kanak itu yang dibutuhkan itu uh, adalah uh, pengasuhan. Nah, ketika kehilangan orang tua dan rata-rata mereka adalah pengasuh utamanya, maka mereka akan kehilangan pengasuhnya. Kehilangan selalu. Nah, anak-anak itu yang dibutuhkan juga adalah bondage atau in, uh, kelekatan ya, antara anak dan orang tua. Itu, itu salah satu bagian penting dari pertumbuhan. While Tasia still has a mother to turn to for emotional support, it's a different story for 18-year-old Rere. Rere, who lives in East Java's capital of Surabaya, has to take care of his younger sister and the deaf aunt after his father's death from COVID-19 in July last year. Rere's mom died of cancer when he was just 10. He also lost his grandparents during the pandemic. Until today, it's still painful to talk about the death of his father, who worked as a driver for a catering company. Kalau sekarang kan nggak ada ya, jadi aku harus jadi kepala keluarga kan. Itu awalnya sih kayak keberatan. Soalnya kan belum waktunya kan sebenarnya umur segini. Cuman makin hari makin hari itu sudah terbiasa gitu loh mbak. Sudah kayak timbul rasa kayak dewasa jadi kepala keluarga gitu. Jadi bisa kayak memimpin gitu loh mbak. Sangat berat mbak. Bener-bener kayak aku put kayak putus asa gitu loh. Bener nggak sih? Sampai. Didukung sama keluarga juga, gitu. Ya, ya, mas, ya bisa. Fortunately for Rere, he recently got a job as a computer operator at the digital printing company after graduating from senior high school last year. But the job is very demanding. Rere is often required to do an overnight shift from midnight to 9 a.m. His major concern now is his 11-year-old sister, Rara. After spending extremely long hours at his office, he barely has enough time for his younger sibling. Kalau kekhawatiran sih cuman itu sih Mbak, kayak adik kan contohnya aku kan berangkat kerja, pulang kerja pun langsung istirahat tidur. Jadi yang mantau adik itu enggak ada. Tapi seenggaknya kan kalau dia mau berusaha kan ada kayak interaksi sama tante, sama keluarga terdekat gitu. Alhamdulillah sih ada. Cuman kan aku belum tahu progresnya gimana. Gitu. Yang tak kawet ini cuma itu sih untuk saat ini. 
Rere earns around 2.5 million rupiah or 183 US dollars a month. He sets aside 1 million rupiah to pay for his motorbike installments. The rest is to cover other expenses. But putting food on the table is often a struggle for this teenager. Yeah, the government. Gimana ya? Gitulah. Gimana cara buat ngatur? Karena aku kan kadang di kantor juga dapat makan. Jadi alhamdulillah aman. Terus kalau misalkan di pertengahan bulan uangnya lagi krisis kan ada dapat masukan lagi. Masukan lagi itu kayak gaji tambahan bonus sih baratnya kan mbak dapat bonus jadi insya Allah aman lah cuman yang aman mungkin kalau ada kebutuhan mendadak gitu Back in Kadiri, Tasia has to deal with her own concerns She often asks herself whether she will have the time, money and energy to continue with her studies after she graduates from high school Iya sebenarnya masih bimbang soal biaya juga gitu takutnya apa itu soalnya kan yang biayain sekarang kan cuma ibu ya mungkin bisa kuliah sambil kerja tapi apa itu dengar dengar gitu kalau perempuan itu jarang susah gitu kalau apa itu kuliah sambil kerja. COVID-19 has forced children like Tasia and Rere to take up roles and responsibilities usually reserved for adults. But they now have little options but to soldier on in spite of all their difficulties or risk losing all that they hope for and dream of. But for how long? Seventeen-year-old Tasia has a big dream. She aspires to become a successful businesswoman one day. For that to happen, the final year student at a senior high school in Kadiri in East Java feels that she has to first earn a university degree in the field of business management. But that dream seems to be slipping away from her grasp. After her father died of COVID-19 last year, she's been busy helping out her mother at the makeshift store near her house. Whatever little money they get is used to pay for the family's daily living expenses and her own education. Studying has also proven to be quite a challenge for her of late. The pandemic had forced schools to shut their doors to students and classes had to move online. That happened especially during the long periods of lockdown last year. Sama juga kayak susah gitu kalau ada yang enggak tahu gitu mau tanya di WA pun juga kayak masih kurang paham gitu. Jadi kayak langsung lebih tahu nantinya tuh gimana gimana tahu. Although more schools have now reopened, catching up on what the students have missed has been a challenge. More than one million students across Indonesia are estimated to have dropped out of school due to the economic impact of the pandemic. Ekonomi orang tua dari wali murid itu rata-rata kan menengah ke bawah. Sehingga untuk membeli ya perlengkapan belajar itu seperti kuota itu tuh memang sepertinya agak kesulitan. Selama pandemi itu itu kesulitan juga oleh guru karena untuk memonitor anak itu mengalami kesulitan. Karena kan nama, jarak jauh ya, kadangkala kita berkomunikasinya itu sulit, kadang dihubungi anak-anak kadang-kadang tidak bisa kalau ditanya kenapa karena tidak punya kuota 
According to UNICEF, the pandemic has affected children around the world at an unprecedented scale, making it the worst crisis the UN agency has seen in its 75-year-old history. Tassia, for one, does not have a moment's rest. Waking up at 4 a.m. to help her mother set up a roadside food store has now become her daily routine. She still has to head off to school at 7 a.m. almost every day. And after school, she has to return to the food store again to attend to her customers. At around noon, she then head home to freshen up before going out yet again to take on a second job at the cafe that specializes in Korean food. She will continue working at the cafe until 4 p.m. Although she's been up since 4 a.m., the day is not over yet for her. She has to return to her mother's food store after 4 p.m. to help her clean up. She will then have to go back to the cafe and work till 10 p.m. Buat bayar SPP sendiri, terus apa itu buat uh, penghasilan uang jajan sendiri daripada minta gitu. But the reality is, her school grades have been falling fairly rapidly over time because of her inability to concentrate on her studies. Kadang kalau pas capek gitu, Tasya juga kayak apa itu nggak bisa ngerjain. Jadi kalau Tasya Ada tugas kadang Tasya bawa juga pekerjaan. Kalau pas nyantai atau nggak ada pembeli, Tasya ya sambil ngerjain. It remains unclear if Tasya will have the stamina to continue working and studying all at the same time. Parental death, economic hardship, and the lack of access to education may affect the motivation of the children and youth to return to schools and that will lead to higher dropout rates among children. Abdullah Abu Bakar is the mayor of Kadiri, a place where Tasya and her family live. Here, more than 300 children have lost their parents to COVID-19 in Kadiri making them vulnerable to all sorts of negative influences, especially the poor. Ini mohon maaf nih saya harus bilang apa adanya perilakunya orang tidak mampu itu uh, atau anu biasanya ya 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 apa adanya ya terserah gitu ya. Kalau nggak bisa sekolah ya sudah gitu aja ya mereka gitu. Nah kita di pemerintah kan nggak boleh ini anak ini putus sekolah maka kalau anak ini putus sekolah angka angka apa namanya angka putus sekolahnya di di pemerintah kan akan naik di Kediri naik di Jawa Timur naik di Indonesia pun juga akan naik ini juga resiko yang besar harus dihadapi bersama-sama ya bagi anak-anak yang kehilangan orang tua selama pandemi ini tentunya kita juga khawatir kalau tidak ditangani dengan baik mereka misalkan tidak bekerja itu kan gampang putus asa anak-anaknya jadi sehingga dia bisa uh, melakukan hal-hal yang mungkin uh, apa ya mencari teman yang mungkin bisa merusaknya dia sehingga masa depannya bisa bukannya masa depan yang cerah malahan tetapi bisa masa depannya yang suram jadinya we know that about 2% of children aged 15 to 18 years uh, who had been enrolled in school up to March 2020, just before the pandemic started, were no longer enrolled in November 2020, based on a survey conducted by World Bank colleagues. 
So this survey indicates that about 1.3 million students dropped out by November 2020. It may be that some of these children are re-enrolling now, and we certainly hope that that's the case, but it is also likely that many dropped out permanently and have been joined by other student dropouts during 2021. And once they're out of the school system, the only option left for them is to join the workforce. In Indonesia alone, COVID-19 has forced millions of children to work to help supplement the income for their families. Ten-year-old school dropout, Rizky, has been working as a street clown in Depok City in West Java for a year, earning an average of 2 million rupiah or around 140 US dollars a month. Having earned cash for himself, Rizky has no desire or interest to continue with his education. Every day, Rizky and his brother Iksan roam the busy intersections in Depok, West Java. Their income is very irregular. It can be as little as 70,000 rupiah or around 5 US dollars to as high as 500,000 rupiah or around 35 US dollars. The money is used to pay the monthly house rent of 500,000 rupiah or 35 US dollars and cover other expenses, including renting the costume. Rizky lives with his 24-year-old brother Iksan, a school dropout who used to be a public transport driver. Iksan's wife, Enda, who treats Rizky like her own son, feels that he should go back to school instead of risking his future. It's a different story for 12-year-old Rahel, who has been working as a street singer in a suburb in South Jakarta for five years to help his parents, earning between four and five US dollars a day. But unlike Rizky, Rahel has no intention of becoming a school dropout. Working a little bit is very productive for a child. It's a very constructive thing for a child to do. It teaches them responsibilities and many other life skills that they will build and learn and, and grow up with. So there is no problem there. Um, what we are afraid of is when children end up having to drop out of school. Should the government do more to protect the general well-being of these children and lighten the burden of their primary caregivers? What will happen to the future of these children should they fall by the wayside for good?
It's been six months since Donna and Benny lost their mother, Triana Augustina, to COVID-19. But the deep sense of grief has not quite improved with time. Donna is 17 years old, and his younger brother, Benny, is only 11. This was the third time they both visited their mother's grave since she died from COVID-19 last year, at the age of 50. They're here again to offer prayers for their mother, who had been their pillar of strength to the day she died. Donna and Benny are now being taken care of by their late mother's aunt, Supati, whom they call Grandma. But living with an older relative has not been easy. In fact, it's been pretty unsettling for them. The boys sleep in a house right behind Supati's in the city of Kadiri, East Java. Supati loves the two boys dearly, but looking after them is not without a challenge. Benny, for one, is still struggling to cope with the loss of his mother. In July 2021, his mum, Triana, was hospitalised for nine days due to complications from diabetes. But on the 11th day, she was declared COVID positive. Her condition deteriorated rapidly and she died soon after. To make matters worse, their father has abandoned them, leaving them in the care of the 72-year-old widow. Waktu ibunya meninggal, bapaknya enggak kesini eh apa ikut berduka cerah enggak ngingok sama sekali. Terus waktu meninggal itu saya suruh tapi nengen bapak ngomong lagi piye piye. Muli odise, engkau tak tututi sampai saya tunggu besok tu enggak muncul ya sampai seratus harinya enggak muncul sama sekali. Ya nangis nangis saya kena bes gak sanangis. Tuhan memberi yang terbaik le. Daripada menderita yang besar kan sudah bisa nyambung ya. Daripada lama menderita di dunia Tuhan mengambil kan anu menderita sakit, menderita tertekan batin, tertekan ekonomi yang besar kan sudah bisa ya jeng saya beri pengertian menu. Wis gak popo jumbo tangisi sing ikhlas nanti di tempat yang enak di sana di sampingnya Tuhan. Supati has been preparing meals for the two boys every day since the day her niece died. She feels it's her duty to take over that responsibility for the sake of the two boys who don't have anyone else to turn to. Taking care of the two boys, however, would also mean extra costs for her. Pokok enek seguni gak sampai telat, iya toh. Saya gitu prinsip saya gitu. Saya utang ya tidak berani ceng. Untuk nyawar apa? Terus kadang-kadang ini yang kecil, maklum anak kecil ya biasa manja sama ibunya toh. Aku mau kini juga seng. Masa apa rawon itu rawon aku gak seneng ya wis tuku apa gitu. Saya dengar nang jeng rumahnya gini. Kalau saya ndak bisa jeng gitu itu. Nanti enggak cukup satu bulan no jeng. The house that Donna and Benny live in belonged to their late mother. It looks dilapidated and is in need of repair. The roof in some of the rooms has already started to leak. Ini gambar saya. Ibu saya, Ibu Triana Agustina. Ini kamar yang bocor ini. Mana yang bocor tu? Ini tas ini. 
yang ini orang tikus ini punya tikusnya ini tempat tidurmu tadinya iya dulu ini tempat tidurku terus banyak tikusnya berisik terus akhirnya nggak tidur sini lagi Donna is well aware of his grandmother's financial difficulties. To help ease her financial burden, the senior high school student helps sell satay together with some friends in the evening. That means going home very late at night. Donna's younger brother, Benny, however, gets support from the local government in the form of cash transfer. He uses the money to pay for his school fees. But it's not the case for Donna. His school fees amounts to 175,000 rupiah or 12 US dollars a month. Kerja sejak sudah ada dua bulan ini kok. Saya kerja karena untuk membantu adik juga nenek juga meringankan beban. Hasil kerja Dona berapa kalau saya boleh tahu per bulan? Per bulan saya 600. For an elderly woman like Supati, she can't stop worrying about the future of the two boys. She keeps asking what will happen to them after she's gone. Who will take care of them when that happens? Hatin saya sendiri kok jenini. Terus naik ke aku terus sopo sopo ini ni. Biji yo biji yo, mungkin mungkin Tuhan memberi saya kesehatan. Saya enggak ingin umur panjang kok jenini. Diberi kesehatan dan hati yang damai sudah. Tu, saya pernah doa saya gitu aja jenini. Bagi anak-anak yang yatim piatu, nah ini harus kita kawal ya untuk mencari pengasuh penggantinya. Kalau bicara masuk masalah pengasuh pengganti, kita kan ada undang-undang yang mengaturnya. Ada undang-undang yang mengaturnya paling di awal itu pasti kita akan cari keluarga terdekat dulu. Ya keluarga terdekat beberapa itu dilakukan tim biasanya diketuai kalau di daerah itu diketuai oleh dinas sosial. Kemudian tim ada tim untuk kita memastikan pengasuh pengganti ini betul-betul tepat. Ya, anak-anak mendapatkan pengasuh pengganti di mana mereka bisa aman dan nyaman, kemudian tidak terjadi penelantaran di kemudian hari, kemudian tidak akan terjadi eksploitasi kepada anak dan tidak akan terjadinya trafficking. Abdullah Abu Bakar has been the mayor of Kediri since 2014. Dealing with the pandemic has been the biggest challenge to date for the 41-year-old. Around 300 children have lost their parents during the pandemic in the city alone. To help these children and their caregivers, the local government is working on a program called Hope for Family. It will be launched this year with the help of the private sector. Among others, it will provide direct cash assistance for these children. Jadi anak-anaknya dibuatkan rekening, mereka nanti bisa ambil di situ di rekening itu. Jadi cashless lah. <laughs> Jadi nggak nggak diinikan satu-satu. Harapannya nanti rekening itu bisa menjadi tempat penampungan kalau Pemda akan memberi uang setiap bulannya itu atau setiap tahunnya gitu. Save the Children Indonesia is also working on a similar project. In the province of West Java, the organization works with the local office of the Social Affairs Ministry to help children who have lost their main caregivers. The help comes in the form of direct cash transfers. Karena sifatnya top up juga, besarnya juga 300 ribu gitu. Hanya kita nanti e, mau berapa bulan gitu ya. Nah gitu, jadi misalnya apakah kita support 3 bulan gitu, ataukah kita support 2 bulan, nah, itu nanti e, itu yang kita diskusikan dengan Kemensos. 47-year-old Sumini, who lost her husband to the coronavirus in August 2021, would likely be one of the main beneficiaries under the new assistance scheme. Despite facing enormous challenges after losing her husband to COVID, the senior high school dropout wants her daughter, Tasia, to do better than her. 
All she wants is for her not to give up hope and continue to chase her dream in spite of all the difficulties. Saya dengan Pantasa jangan seperti ibu lu. Kamu harus di atasnya. Pendidikan utama. Jadi jadilah orang yang berguna bagi dirimu sendiri. Orang lain aja segitu kok. Saya tidak minta apa-apa sama anak itu. For Donna and Benny, adjusting to a new life with their adopted grandmother is likely to be a long process. They can't think into the future, but are trying to overcome life's challenges one step at a time, at least for now. Donna, what is your name? What do you want to do? I want to be a business. Kalau adik sudah tahu belum cita-citanya ingin jadi apa? Tentang-tentang, masih mikir. What will the future be like for these children? Will they remain motivated to pursue their dreams in spite of all the odds stacked against them? Or will they simply give up the fight? Grief can manifest itself in many ways, from denial to guilt, sadness and despair. For eight-year-old Santi, this water bottle holds a special meaning for her. It reminds her of her father, who died more than six months ago. Santi would often hang on to it each time she misses him. Coincidentally, the bottle was used by her late father to quench his thirst the night before he was taken to hospital due to COVID-19 related problems. But he never came back. He died soon after he reached the hospital. Berapa kali tuh nyariin kok di rumah, di depan nggak ada. Ternyata lagi di sini lagi melukin botol minum yang terakhir ini. Botol minum. Terus dia bilang, kakak, uh, botolnya jangan dibuang ya, ini yang ayah yang ayah pegang waktu pas terakhir di rumah. Malam itu juga ayah minta adek ngisin airnya di dapur. Adek kalau kangen mau meluk botol itu aja. Santi lost both of her parents to the coronavirus in June last year. Her mother passed away first, followed by her father a few hours later. Ah, itu langsung apa namanya dia langsung nangis ke belakang adek nangis ngejerit akunya juga udah bukan yang nangis sedih lagi udah emosi nangisnya yang sampai ke dapur tuh kayak mau ngambil pisau mau nyakitin diri gitu terus ada yang meluk kak adek cuma punya kakak doang jangan tinggalin adek itu langsung nangis berdua langsung udah nggak bisa ngapa-ngapain lagi udah diam aja ngomong tuh sampai Tahlil seminggu tu, nggak tidur selama seminggu sama adik ditenangin bersama dia. Kayak gitu yang kejadian yang udah benar singkat, langsung cepet banget kejadiannya. More than six months have passed since their parents died. Santi has now begun to come to terms with the reality, but little reminders still plunge her into deep sadness and grief. At times, the pain of losing her parents remains as raw as the day when they both left them to meet their creator. But Elsa knows that she has to remain strong for the sake of her eight-year-old sister. Ya ini kamar ibu sama ayah. Spraynya juga masih yang spray terakhir dipakai ayah sama ibu pas sakit. Belum belum ikhlas ngegantinya. Kalau mau beresin tuh langsung nangis meluk boneka tiduran di sini. Gitu. Ntar ada yang kakak kenapa dia yang hibur lagi. 
COVID-19 has a devastating impact on children around the world, including Indonesia. Many hearts, dreams and hopes have been crushed in the process by the sudden deaths of their loved ones. They feel lost and defeated when everything that they had fought for vanished in the blink of an eye. Beratnya, ya itu tiba-tiba sepi rumah harusnya ada tapi ternyata nggak ada. Belum banyak belajar dari ibu gimana caranya jadi ibu yang baik. Terus uh, belum wujudin cita-cita ayah yang ayah pengen sarjana. Ya seperti itu. Terus uh, banyak banyak hal yang belum belum diobrolin sama ayah ibu. Elsa's story is repeated across Indonesia which has seen more than 140,000 deaths due to COVID-19. Although around half of the population has been fully vaccinated and cases have dropped significantly since July last year, the government cannot afford to let its guard down due to the prevalence of the new Omicron variant. The country has now started administering vaccinations to children aged 6 to 11 in December in a bid to contain any further spread of the virus. Of equal concern is the education for the children. The prolonged school closures and the loss of livelihood have so far put the future of these children in jeopardy. The authorities are now hoping that a new wave of deadly infections will not hit the nation ever again. Kalau menurut saya, kalaupun apa kita ada gelombang berikutnya ya kita mau nggak mau harus terima kalau ya berdoanya sih nggak ada gelombang karena berdoanya selesai lalu kita bisa seperti sedia kala gitu ya kan sayang sekali sekarang angka putus sekolahnya apalagi zaman Pak Presiden ini kan menurun karena COVID naik nah ini kan nggak boleh nih kita harus pertahankan terus karena investasi terbaik adalah investasi pendidikan bagi anak-anak itu Kalau perlu ya di di sopong bareng-bareng, di ditanggung bareng-bareng. So it it's clear that the pandemic has placed major burdens on the government, on the society, and very unfortunately on individual children. Right? There are lots of different actors at different levels of government trying to provide support. I mean, recurring recovering from the learning loss during COVID and improving beyond it are major challenges. Elsa feels fortunate because she has found a job with the help from the government and other institutions. She's now working at the finance department of a frozen food company, earning around 3.8 million rupiah or 267 US dollars a month. She uses the money to help pay for her daily expenses and attend to the needs of her younger sister, Santi. She also sets aside some 500,000 rupiah or 35 US dollars to pay for the costs of her education. Hmm. Waktu ada ayah sama ibu, biasanya untuk nabung sama untuk keperluan pribadi. Cuman sekarang kan jadi tulang punggung yang gantiin ayah, jadi untuk dipakai sehari-hari. Tanggung jawabnya sekarang jadi ngerasa oh ada harus ngedidik, harus ya emang ngejaga tanggung jawab sampai Sampai dia gede nanti, gitu. Although life has resumed its normal course, Elsa still has worries about the future. She remains deeply concerned about Santi's emotional state and her mental development since the passing of their parents. Takut gagal, nggak bisa ngurus adik. Takut banget. Takut dia nggak sebahagia teman-temannya kadang kalau misalnya dia lagi dititipin ke rumah temannya keluarganya yang utuh mikir ini nanti dia ngelihat ngelihat posisi diri dia sendiri dan ngelihat temannya itu yang utuh itu dia mikirin nggak ya gitu dia sedih nggak karena rasa aja yang besar aja masih belum nerima apalagi dia. But Elsa has no other choice but to soldier on in spite of all the adversities, for the sake of a little sister. COVID-19 has dealt a severe blow to the lives and mental health of children and youth all over the world. And no vaccines in the world can help ease their pain and trauma 
following the loss of their loved ones to the disease. Many are hoping that at least Indonesia's economy will bounce back from the crisis so as to help them cope and survive the impact of the crisis or risk becoming part of a lost generation. Pandemi ini luar biasa dampaknya, ya. Perkawinan anak meningkat, demikian juga pekerja anak dengan dampak di sisi ekonomi yang tidak bisa kita hindarkan. Makanya ke depan strategi yang kita mulai dari tingkat akar rumput ini kita akan kembangkan. Kita perlu sama-sama membangun support system dalam bentuk lingkungan yang aman dan nyaman untuk mereka, karena mereka adalah anak-anak kita yang perlu sama-sama kita pastikan mendapat kasih sayang yang sama seperti yang diberikan oleh orang tuanya. Memastikan tumbuh kembang anak terdampak COVID-19 merupakan tanggung jawab kita bersama.